your, your purple dress. I shouldn't, right? I shouldn't, I should let you enjoy that segment. So we'll have the segment um, for the best dressed mother in purple. Then we'll have the giveaways. The door prizes are off the hook. You have tea, a, 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 um, an afternoon tea by, um, from Java Coffee Bar there on Duncan Street or if you prefer to go to um, no well let's go to Duncan Street because that is where I think would be a better atmosphere then we have a bedside covered by Kisoons we'll have a lot of giveaways for you also I'll be opening up some spaces for uh, my friends in the creative arts um, there will be, well, we don't want to say booth, but tables with scented candles. With um, There'll be a mobby stand. Well, of course, you'll have to purchase when you're leaving because you can't take a um, mobby into the theater at the, wherever we will be, right? So we have that and we also have um, a tie-dye stand with lovely um, pieces on display so beautiful Sunday afternoon for you on Mother's Day it's, yes it's a Sunday alright so we'll talk some more about it when we're going out we'll go out with a song from um, the show uh, in 20, 2019 but we had a show last year 2022 we had that at the police officers mess so we'll see what the technician will do for us okay so very good afternoon to our sponsors, um, Small Spottery, they're right next door to Channel 9 here. If you have anybody's birth anniversary or wedding anniversary, you want to make gifts to them, use Pottery. If you have your Hindu brother or sister celebrating at any anniversary at all, you have Lord Shiva, the elephant, the dove and so on that you can present them also for us christians you have the praying hand for the muslims the praying hands of christians you we have the crucifix we have the um the dove and we have there are other pieces over there that you totally enjoy making gifts with or present yourself right go over there at small spottery and ask mr gary and he'll get everything for you all right, so let's go right into our discussion this afternoon. I have a very important profession, professional for, to tell you about his journey. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our young professional for today. And I'm quite certain you'll enjoy it. Mr. Jairo. How are you? I am all right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to the Young Professionals of Guyana. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Well, let's talk. <laughs> what would you like to know? <laughs> who are you? Ah, who is Jairo? Uh, so there are so many aspects I find to that question, you know. Um, Jairo, the professional, I mm -hmm. do human rights and social development work. Okay, we, we mm -hmm. can talk about that just <laughs> now. Um, I just wanted you to say, well, you're handsome and you're cool and all of that. I, I really am. <laughs> um, oh my so gosh. let's talk about where were you born? Oh, I was born right here in the city of Georgetown. Oh, you're a city boy. I village. Am a city boy. <laughs> Which village? Uh, not so. Downtown, as in uh, resident, is South Roundfield. South Roundfield. I mean, See, he's right next door. He's from right next door to us. Then I guess you grew up there. Yeah. So, part, part. So, All right. I spent many years in Georgetown up uh -huh. until right about secondary school uh -huh. and then I moved to Great Diamond on the East Bank uh -huh. so that's more suburban a little bit quieter just one commute to the city mm -hmm. but I think I'd like to say I had the best of both worlds being right nice. in the heart of the city and where it's a bit more quiet all right I like that schools attended uh, from, from nursery <laughs> nursery <laughs> uh, nursery St. Agnes, um, mm -hmm. I was at Saint nursery. Agnes and then I went to Sacred Heart Primary 
Mm -hmm. um, up until that unfortunate fire, and then I went to Maze on the so, Sorry, we, we, I missed what you said just now. Up a until Sacred Heart Primary, it burnt down. Oh, in, up until the fire. Up until the fire. Oh, oh okay. Um, it was a dreadful day, right, from Christmas morning. And then I went to Mays on the 12th primary. Mm -hmm. There's where I graduated from primary education. And then I mm -hmm. went to Marion Academy, where I mm -hmm. completed my secondary education. Sure. Nice. Before we go on to tertiary, let's talk about the transition from your primary to your secondary. Hmm. How was that? I... Whew. Because we know um, Mays... Mays and Marian and Marian Academy. Marian is a Catholic school, is mm -hmm. that so? Yeah. And then you went on to Mays. So how was the transition from a Catholic school to? It was the opposite from Mays. From Mays to, to Marian, yes. Marian. Sorry. Well, I think a really good question would be the transition from Sacred Heart to Mays at first, because it was a public school into private, private education. private school, yes, that's right. So I myself had to really, at that age, come into conflict with classism and mm -hmm. what that looks like. Um, being from a middle class family, a working class family, with a lot of, you know, upper class persons there, and mm -hmm. that sort of a bit shaped my personality, my oh. outlook. Mm -hmm. But definitely from Mays into Marion. I missed Mays. Mays was a lot more free in terms of how mm -hmm. we are as students and expressions. So Marion had a lot of its values. And I mean, it's been a Catholic school. It's like 200 years of Catholic history and institution. Mm -hmm. Of course, starting from when Gan itself had Catholic schools as mm -hmm. institutions of education. Um, but my family were Catholics. Ah. And, you know, I was raised a Catholic up until around form two or three, where I reverted to Islam. So, oh, attended okay. a Catholic school and <laughs> reverted uh, okay. to Islam. Um, that must be interesting. Very much so. I had so Let's just talk a little bit about that. Combos. Was it hard for you or oh. was it easy for you to transition from Catholic to Islam? That is such a beautiful story to me about my own personal journey of mm -hmm. acceptance. Uh, I just had a lot of questions because at the same time I was attending Catholic school. Mm -hmm. um, not education as in what you call Sunday school, except mine was right, on Monday. Church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just had so many questions and I wasn't getting the answers, answers I wanted, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. simple things I questioned from them. I don't think they very much appreciated that, but you know, when you're a child, you have all these these questions you mm -hmm. want, you know. Mm -hmm. And after I wasn't getting it, I was also conflicted with my own personal life, with relationships, mm -hmm. attractions, all of this mm -hmm. thing that conflicted with spirituality, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be conflicted. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I just don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. I don't. And it's a very scary thing to actually tell yourself mm -hmm. when you are raised in a Catholic family and you go mm -hmm. to a Catholic school. But I couldn't, it was just so, I, I couldn't not believe in God. To me, mm -hmm. like, it just made sense that something else is bigger out there that mm -hmm. exists. So from that experience, I started to read up on the odd religions. I went to the school library mm -hmm. and I started with the world's oldest religion, which is Hinduism. And, you know, with their whole being of creation and Brahma, mm -hmm. you know, the journey. I was like, you know, not for me, but interesting, you know, right. tales of values and stories of how you live your life. And then I went to the Judas, uh, the Abrahamic religions, Judaism. Judaism. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, my understanding of Christianity. And to me, Islam just made the most, most sense, sense as a way of mm -hmm. being and a way of life. Because, quite frankly, it's about submission to that being mm -hmm. and the very first sentence of their proclamation of belief called the Shahada is there is no God but one God full stop right. so I was like this is right. it yeah but were your parents troubled when you oh. when you changed when you decided that you this is the way you want to go so there was a yes or no that or was a, a yes conflict because no. my dad is Muslim Oh. My mom was the one who, she, you know, we were raised Catholic. Catholic. So she was, at the end of it, she was like, once you have God in your life, right. I'm okay with this. That's right. <laughs> All right. Okay. I just wanted my, my viewers to get you very clearly. And I did, and I totally appreciate you opening about that. Thank you. Yes. All right. So let's talk about your tertiary education. Oh. 
You know, I don't think I ever took a break from education because mm -hmm. from nursery. Were you ever a student to the University of Ghana? Yeah, and that's okay. the thing. I didn't, after all those years, mm -hmm. even from high school, I went straight into university. Mm -hmm. And, that and what you read for? Uh, Bachelor of Social Sciences in International Relations. That I was are. My major. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't supposed to be. Oh, that's what you wanted thing. to do for at first? What my parents, my mom wanted me to do was law. Ah. Uh, even some teachers in high school, they're like, oh, you can speak, and you know, you're always argumentative, do law. And right. I went in with all intentions of doing law, but I found it so boring, so more. I couldn't stay up. <laughs> I had one strong course at law, which is public international law, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, what are we supposed to just read and read and read and then, you know? <laughs> But I fell in love with the politics of international no relations. relations. It was such a beautiful course. It's more than just reading. It, it's about interpreting and it's about the, the aspect of arguing with law, mm -hmm. but wanting social and political change mm -hmm. using this program right. as a social science. And that is my career today, you know, that's nice. what that interests. So you graduated from UG at, with in, a, a your, your bachelor's bachelor's of social science uh -huh. in 2015. oh well you look like 15 you mean 2015 this is what we no, in no no <laughs> don't let this type of young professionals i'm nearing 30. <laughs> oh lord but I'm excited. he's nearing 30 like as I, though he's nearing 80. <laughs> i am excited for my 30s. yes so let's talk continue this conversation on your tertiary education mm -hmm. so when you graduated what did you do when you, you finished graduating, then you went no into breaks. work, you went into study again? No, so when I graduated in 2015, mm -hmm. um, I graduated in November. Mm -hmm. In December, I got a call, hi, um, we saw you, re you recently graduated, um, we invite you to interview with us. And I did, this was at SASA, the Society Against okay. Sexual Orientation Discrimination. And at the same time, I was experimenting with volunteerism for social mm -hmm. development and also my own entrepreneurial sort of social mm -hmm. enterprising. But I'm like, okay, I'll interview and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed one day. Um, the next day I got it, they were like, come in. And that started my six years journey. Not complete, I spent like nearly three years with SASA, mm -hmm. uh, working on political lobbying and mm -hmm. social... Explain to my viewers, what do you mean by political lobbying? So, my job was a social change coordinator and I did social change advocacy by lobbying with parliamentarians, government ah, officials. Right. You know, we do have some laws mm -hmm. in Guyana that's archaic, they're colonial, they're old. Right. And we need to review them, we need to update them. In some cases, you need to completely take them out take the law books. Right. So my job was to engage politicians and communities to have them, make them aware that these laws are discriminating against mm -hmm. our population. So my job was essentially that, that bring awareness, beautiful. lobby people for it, bring communities together, mobilize them for social change. And I did that for three years. Nice. Before expanding. <laughs> to? <laughs> to sexual and reproductive health and rights. Right. So my work at SASA was specifically on LGBT rights, which is a matter mm. of sexual and human rights. Mm -hmm. But sexual and reproductive health and rights expanded beyond known of women's rights, equality, mm -hmm. rights to access health care, mm -hmm. rights about your own body autonomy, and something very mm -hmm. passionate about the education of young people to mm -hmm. not only know about, but to access sexuality, education, education. and resources. Right. Because even as kids, you know, we need to know the proper names of our body parts. We need to understand that this is this is our body. We maintain rights over our bodies and should be able to express yes. those freedoms and rights. Mm -hmm. And that was my job for another close to three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Which is essentially, it moves beyond political lobbying into mm -hmm. community advocacy and international lobbying. So I met governments from the region, Latin America and the Caribbean, and lobbied at the Universal Periodic Review, mm -hmm. which is a series of every three years, the international community through mm -hmm. the United Nations review the human rights records of every country. country. Mm -hmm. So my job was to sit and give the civil society aspect of oh, what's going mm -hmm. on. You know, the government is a respond, but civil society itself yes. is another respondent. And so I met with, you know, great 
great people at the uh, the United Nations. Level. Or you mean the people who met with a great person? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a small, you know, part of this I... machinery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's continue on your educational journey. Your well, masters. My masters. So everything I did prepared me for my masters. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, because let me take a step back at you. Sure, go. Uh, you remember I mentioned that I law. I was supposed to do law, but mm -hmm. did IR instead. Um, I didn't finish as a strong student. At one point, I was like, maybe university is not for me. Um, and I was just having this con conversation with a past lecturer of mine, actually, uh, Mr. Chevy Devinish, and I was saying, you mm -hmm. said something in one of your courses that actually made me think I can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, we were discussing republicanism. I had him as a young professional. You Chevy, had Chevy. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. Yeah, brilliant young man. He had me laughing from <laughs> dust till dawn, <laughs> talking about all his failures and all. He failed yeah. and how many times he failed in high school. How many, I always and how talk many about. people looked at him as a failure. And he was like, no, that is not me. Mm -hmm. And he did the same for me. Because yeah. I, I, I actually failed politics. I failed the first year. And I was like, mm, maybe this isn't for me. But in the second year when I read it, he was my lecturer. lecturer. And he asked a question, and I just, I was like, the United States is an example of a Republican state. Mm -hmm. And he was like, someone's been reading. And I was like, I actually knew this. I didn't read about this. <laughs> and that made me remember that I was actually a brilliant kid because I was inquisitive. Yes. And I'm like, you know what? Don't shoot yourself in, in your foot, foot. Gyro. Right. And Fast forward to that experience from University of Guyana to mm -hmm. my master's. I was shooting myself in the foot. I never thought I could have. But I always think highly of you. you Everyone know. thinks I I'm always such think that you're so brilliant I, and he's talented. Honestly, I don't say, I don't tell myself that. I, I just think I'm, I have certain talents and I use them. But right. I never. My thing is that I don't know everything. Right. I don't. None but of I, us do. I'm curious. Right. That's the thing. I'm being curious is a good thing. And right. I don't think we should ever tell kids, you know, put your hands down or don't talk or don't, mm -hmm. you know. It's a matter of how you do it, do but we it should right. encourage children mm -hmm. to be expressive and to learn and to ask questions. Yes. I'm sad to say, again, we don't necessarily do that, you know. The whole children must be seen and not heard. Um, I think it's kind of fading away. Yes, because I think now is. we're more educated on certain things and we're more open to talking to our children and talking mm -hmm. because I talk with my, I just had a talk earlier today with my grandson on what I'm expecting of him because he came in and he said, you know, granny, my friends don't believe that you're my grandmother. They saw us together and they're still, they're saying, oh, it's not true. I want to show off. Well, I love that you're from an industry of expression, you know, creative. Mm -hmm. So I love, and indeed, more and more persons are mm -hmm. understanding that. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the, the years we spent, we can do better for our mm -hmm. kids. And I don't have kids. I have a wonderful nephew. He's super smart, and he's, yes. and he's so, you know, expressive, and I mm -hmm. love that about him. But yeah. to the shooting on self in the foot. Mm -hmm. My career prepared me for my master's. Right. Um, and all the years I was like, okay, maybe this isn't, you know, I wouldn't do good at it. And I graduated with a distinction, actually, first class honors from the University of East Anglia with my Master's of Arts in Could you tell us analysis. where is East Anglia? Oh, so the University of East Anglia is based in Norwich in the United Kingdom. I spent my year learning in the UK, right. touring, and it was an amazing beautiful, experience. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, I'm so, I, you would not believe how excited I was when I asked you to come on this program and you agreed and you were very enthusiastic too about coming here and I was so happy I said yes finally I got child. Can I just <laughs> say though that um Twitter uh is what made me do this show. Uh-huh. Because I don't do public I shows. don't do public appearances, I don't do shows because it's always on you know me which i feel uncomfortable about because i work for a community you know mm -hmm. human rights advocacies i want to but this that. here you get to talk about what you that's do that's what someone said so i looked right? at the show and yeah. i realized they got that but twitter was like you know you do have an opportunity to talk about these issues yes. with the person and yeah. i watch what you did Simone. honestly it's so brilliant thank you for doing shows thank like you. this and twitter was like do it so <laughs> <laughs> here i am I'm so happy 
So um, we talked about your profession proper and so on. Let's talk a little bit, just like a minute on your challenges, the challenges you had, if any, on the path, your educational path. Just as I explained, thinking I couldn't do something, you mm -hmm. know, thinking that maybe, you know, this isn't for me or I'm not, and this word, and this really came in my mind, I'm not smart enough. I was like, I'm not smart enough to do a master's. And then at one point, maybe <laughs> UG is it? Don't, don't do that to yourself. Oh, as I said, find your passion, really mm -hmm. delve into it and use that. And that's right. what I did for my master's. I wrote in my own community because I realized there's a gap in when it comes to research, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in like LGBT issues, young people and children, all mm -hmm. these things. I said, let me research and write about that. And my lecturers, nice. you know, loved it. Very uh, good. Well, my professors, you know, Maybe. and mm -hmm. that's what I did. And I ended up, I was shocked. Yeah, well, After that's you got my the yeah. I think I actually saw um, saw you say, when you you um, celebrated on on Facebook, and I was like, yes, yes. As soon as he come back, it's me. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything else that you do other than um, than your your profession? Mm -hmm. Are you into entrepreneurship? Are you into acting? Are you into the performing arts? Are I you into love singing? theater. I absolutely love theater. Like when I was in London, I told myself I need to see Lion King on Broadway, and I did, and it was phenomenal. Yes. It just and then you know I immediately started thinking of Guyana and the stage and how we can. Yeah. But I've always been a backstage kind of. Person. No, but you're gonna be backstage kind of person because you remember you and I met actually at the theater girl. Yeah. And when I, I fell was in love. With with you. <laughs> I, I fell in love I with you. I acted years them. ago and I loved it. But mm -hmm. I, I do, um, I volunteer. Okay. I'm part of an organization called the Imperial House, which yes. coordinates social development programs. And one yeah. such program. I had, I had Wasim too as a young professional. Oh, oh I love Wasim. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he's a brother to me. Yes, we love each other. Wasim. I love Wasim too. It's, it's, um, where do you see yourself in the next five years? I would love to lecture at the University of Ghana. You have your university. master's. I have my master's. You have you like, replied? Have you applied? I did. They're like, we love you. We want you. Just not right now because they're structuring the gender yes. development program. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm waiting, but hopefully in five years do that. I'm also thinking of my PhD because I'm not shooting myself in the foot anymore. But yes. <laughs> I also want to stay grounded to reality because I love Guyana. I'm happy to be working here. So there's a lot of social development yes. programs I've started here. Yes. So I want to continue. Yeah. Guyana. When you say you love Guyana, you're like me. In my mind, all my life, I, I can't see myself living anywhere else. I cannot. I can't live anywhere. I am qualified to teach in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I'm qualified to teach drama in the Caribbean. And still, I prefer to stay in Guyana and get a little bit of money and teach my own people because I work with the children from nine years old to 16. I prefer to stay here with my little bit of money and live happy and I serve love my country. that you say that because money isn't yeah. you know, all of it. I could um. do it some more though if they listen. <laughs> But I love my country and so on. And it's already time for us to go. But before we go, I ask you to talk to my viewers. What word of advice would you give to a young person who is um, choosing their career path? They're not certain, they're undecided. Or they've chosen a path and thinking, okay, nothing is going on here for me. I'm quitting, I'm giving All up, right. I'm done. What word of advice would you give to my viewers? Be passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. Always love it. Uh, absolutely love it. Love yourself and learn to express that love for what you have for your own being and your community. Um, Ghana is a great place to be, especially right now with all the development. And my advice to you is to get your certificates, get your mm -hmm. accreditation, be qualified because listen, the way the economy is moving rapidly, social development must match that. Don't let it run away from you. You have to catch it. And when you catch it, hold on to it and do good for yourself and your people. We need young professionals and we need you. So whatever you love, whatever is it you can do, find that passion and be the best person you can be. Whatever you love, what, do whatever you can do. Find that passion and be the best person that you can be. Gyro. 
We couldn't want to take away anything else more than that from your interview this afternoon. I know my audience are sitting at the edge of their seats and really listening and paying attention to all that you have said. Because they meet me on the road and they say, oh gosh, Simone, I enjoy this. Simone, play this back. Simone, can you do this? Can you do that? Thank you for the young professionals. Thank you for bringing that. the young people to fall. Right? Because people would see you walking down the road insignificantly and they wouldn't know who you are. They wouldn't know of your contributions to our beautiful country. They wouldn't know that we are like minded. We can't go and live nowhere else. We gotta stay right in Guyana and serve our country. Sarah, Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you Jairo. for having me. It's honestly a pleasure. And I do um, enjoy sharing this space with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have to go. This is be the saddest part when, <laughs> when it, the show comes to an end. Um, thank you so much to um, Gafur Group of Companies. Thank you to Small Pottery. Thank you to HBTV Channel 9. They're very, very gracious to us. And they believe in young people too. And see you next Sunday when we'll do this all over again again with another young professional of Guyana. Simone saying goodbye.